So back in April, pretty much last year, I made this video talking about New Hope 40 and her history with this brand new series called New Hope Profiles. If you want to see more of, Sep of New Hope's mode of power, then by all means, tell me what you want in the comments. After that, this happened, then this happened, and then this. Gee, I better make good on that promise. Now I saw quite a number of you request 1533, wondering what happened to her. Well, I'll tell you all about her. Fifteen thirty three was built by the Montreal Locomotive Works as number two sixty four in nineteen eleven. It would later have its number changed to thirteen twenty five one year later. Now some sources say she was built for the Canadian National. Wrong. She was actually built for the Canadian Northern Railroad, a predecessor to the Canadian National. It's no big deal though. It's a common mistake, like how people pronounce the Reading Railroad as the Reading Railroad. Anyways, 1325 was designated as a CNOR H6-G Class 460 10-wheeler, and for those new to the hobby, this denotes her wheel arrangement, with four wheels on the pilot, six drive wheels, and no trailing truck wheels. Add six and four, you get ten, hence the 10-wheeler name. 1325 and her hundreds of sisters served on branch lines in Quebec, Ontario, Mantanoba, and Saskatchewan. A few operated in New Brunswick, Alberta, and British Columbia on both passenger trains and freight trains. In 1919, the Canadian Northern was merged into Canadian National, inheriting 797 locomotives from the Canadian Northern Railway, of which 348 were the H6s, including 1325. As the Canadian National acquired new diesel locomotives, numbers were needed for them. So in 1956, the H6s were renumbered from 1323 to 1342, to 1523 to 1543, to avoid confusion with the newly arriving GMD SW1200 RS switchers. 1325 would be renumbered to 1533. Sadly, all but four H6 engines were scrapped between 1954 and 1961. 1392 was donated to the Edmonton Exhibition Board for display at the Exhibition Grounds, and now runs in the Alberta Prairie Railway on trackage between Stettler and Big Valley, Alberta, on holiday weekends throughout the summer months. 1395 and 1551 would be sold to the Edaville Railroad Association for display at Steamtown in Bellows Falls, Vermont. In 1986, 1551 was then sold to the Ohio Central Railway in Sugar Creek, Ohio. In 1988, number 1395 would be purchased by the Coopersville and Marne Railway, 20 miles northwest of Grand Rapids, Michigan, where it sits out of service. As for our locomotive, 1533, it was bought by the Steam Trains Incorporated in 1962, which later became the New Hope and Ivyland Railroad and sent to the Reading Shops in St. Clair, Pennsylvania, along with another steam engine, a former Cliffside 280 No. 40, which we covered in the last episode, along with several 1920s era steel coaches from the Reading that they hadn't used in years. She was ready for service shortly thereafter and operated excursions between New Hope and Lahaska Station along Site 40 and former U.S. Army 060 No. 9. Now for some technical aspects. 1533 has 63 inch diameter drive wheels, weighs in at over 297,000 pounds or 148.5 tons, and has a maximum tractive effort of 30,560 pounds by force. Interestingly, she weighs more than 40, but has slightly less tractive effort. She's 63 feet 6.5 inches in length, coupling to coupling, and is 14 feet 10.5 inches in overall height. Her whistle was a CN5 chime. Unfortunately, I could not find any footage of 1533 with audio, let alone footage of her blowing her whistle with audio. But Here's a video of 1533's whistle on New Hope 40 in the 1980s to give you an idea on her voice.
interestingly, despite 40 being more local to the area, being a Baldwin product from Philadelphia, 1533 was found to be easier to operate and was New Hope's main steam locomotive for several years, proving to be quite popular with crews and passengers. However, by 1975, 1533's career would take a sour turn, as she was in need of an overhaul. At the same time, management changed, and the New Hope and Ivyland came under new ownership under McHugh Brothers Service, the freight carrier of New Hope at the time. They had to make a tough choice, either give 1533 her needed overhaul, or replace her with New Hope 40. And so, in December of 1975, McHugh Brothers Service, and later the New Hope Steam Railway, found that due to a lack in funds, that they'd now make 40 the new main steam locomotive. And ever since then, 1533 has sat behind the shops at New Hope, out of service. Having fallen victim to rust and corrosion from the elements, it's unlikely she will ever run again, granting that it'd be very costly to fully restore her. Even if another railroad were to buy her, as that's what happened in number 9, they'd have to go through the trouble of an overhaul before running her. Until then, she will remain behind the sheds where she stands. For those fortunate enough to see her operate, she will always be known as CN 1533. Thanks for watching. The following people who provided photos and videos will be mentioned during the credits reel. I also want to thank my donors at GoFundMe and my Patreons at Patreon.com. Your support definitely is a big help and keeps these videos going. I'll progress further in New Hope's mode of power when we talk about little number 9. Thanks for watching, and keep on steaming.